Saturday morning, May 4th, in Tesla full self-driving version 12.3.6 is almost through downloading. Using my cell to provide the Wi-Fi since I'm not home. So we'll do a test drive soon. Software fully downloaded. Counting down to the installation. I'm recording today using the Insta360 X3 action camera. This time in single camera mode, which records 4K video at 30 frames per second, only using the front camera. This should prevent some of the overheating and possibly improve some of the resolution. We'll see how that works. Even though the camera has 5.7K total resolution, that spreads so widely that once you reframe, the effective resolution is closer to 1K in the finished product. So let's see how this works using this mode this time. Do not drive until complete. Don't worry, I won't. So today's drive will take me from the neighborhood to the Kissimmee Airport. I need to fly my Cessna to Lakeland, Florida to Gulf Coast Avionics. One of the Garmin GFC 500 servers failed again. And again, uh, this is like the third time this has happened since I got the new autopilot three or four years ago. They do extend the warranty when these things fail and they decide again they're going to replace all three servers, not just the failed server, because they're apparently still part of a defective batch. So I'll fly over VFR and leave the plane for them. My appointment is in a few days. It took about three weeks to get the appointment for the maintenance, which Garmin will cover the cost of. That is, other than the cost of flying the plane over to Lakeland and then taking an Uber back to Kissimmee, where my car will be sitting at the Kissimmee Airport. So that's a little bit of a nuisance. It's about a 20, 25 minute flight and about an hour drive. I'll do a separate video on that if I can get the cameras arranged right. I haven't done much video recording from the airplane, so I'm still experimenting with the best way to do it. I may try to capture some of the audio this time from the uh, radio slash intercom for this uh, short VFR flight, probably at two or 3,000 feet, depending on where the traffic is. The Lakeland Airport is just outside of the Tampa Class B, and the Kissimmee Airport is just underneath the Orlando Class B. I will ask for flight following if I can get a word in edgewise on the radio. Software update is now rebooting. Took about 27 minutes to complete. The release notes were just like the release notes from the last version, and didn't really say anything new, and haven't said anything new for several versions, really no longer get the details we used to get on these release notes as to what exactly improved from the prior version. And here we are. Let's try 17.01. Patrick. We got the route. It says about 18 minutes. So let's see. So I'm not quite ready to activate. Still full self driving supervised. Still not able to drive. Hmm. Got the screen on. Got the menus. But we'll not go into gear. First time I've seen that happen. Wheel still locked. We have a destination on the GPS. It says press brake pedal to shift gears. So I press it. Put it back in park and see what happens. Hmm. Does it go reverse? Does it go drive? Does it go into park? 
Let me end the navigation. Interesting. So I've given it a couple of minutes here. I wouldn't say it's bricked, but it certainly doesn't want to go into gear. I can turn on the turn signal. I can turn on the lights. I can access the menus. Just can't put it into gear. Okay, well, let's try a reboot and see what happens. I have noticed in the last couple of updates that you don't have to hold the two buttons in quite as long to get the reboot to occur. So the mirror is just folded back to the Tesla logo. Tesla logo again. Back to the menu. So, so this time when I push the brake pedal, the seat readjusts and it does go into gear. So let's choose our destination again. Let's try to activate the full self-driving. Okay. Please keep your hands on the wheel and be prepared. Well, I'll try it again. Oh, I had to give it a nudge to get it to start. Interesting. By nudge, I mean I tapped the accelerator pedal. No turn signal. Ah, now it turns it on. You must have heard me. And it just gave me a steering wheel nudge. So like I said, we're starting from inside the neighborhood where the speed limit varies from 20 to 25 miles an hour. Another notice to touch the steering wheel, which I satisfied by moving the volume knob up and down. So this time I have the action camera mounted at my eye level, a few inches to the right of my eye, on a selfie stick wedged between the seat and the center console. So this should be pretty close to what the average driver, I'm five foot nine, would see even though it's a little bit closer to the center than my actual eyes are. Another notice to touch the wheel. So that's a little more frequent than normal, especially considering the low speed we're at and the lack of traffic. And I've got the sunglasses on, so it can't really track my eyes. So it can see which direction my head is pointed. And another. So that's getting pretty quick. So let's try taking off the glasses and see if it's any more confident when it can see my eyes. Or maybe it's annoyed to look at my camera so close to my face, thinking that I'm watching it. So the gate is closed up ahead and there's a speed bump in front of the gate. You got to get fairly close to the gate to get it to open. There's another steering wheel notice. So we're slowing down slowly creeping over the speed bump and the gate is starting to open. And 
here we go. So that wasn't so bad. I've heard some people saying their car would not get close enough to the gate to make it open. But in versions prior to 12, it would just crash into the gate if you let it. Or especially the uh, rising and falling barricades that some neighborhoods have, including mine when you enter the neighborhood. So fairly busy crossing traffic. We have a stop sign. And a car behind us, so I may have to give a nudge so they don't get impatient. And it stops short of the sign and then starts to creep. And it should go after this pickup if it gets on with it. That was about right. We're still driving in chill mode to avoid excessive lane changes and excessive close following. Another notice, so it is less frequent now that the sunglasses are off. That is the notice to touch the steering wheel. Or literally to apply a slight turning motion to the steering wheel. Which normally I satisfy by just adjusting the volume up and down one notch. If you pull too hard on the steering wheel, it'll actually disengage the autopilot. So you have to have just the right touch. It's climbing up just a little bit, still technically scattered, maybe somewhere in the two to three thousand foot range. The airport weather information still says clear, which obviously is not the case, but that was the automated system. So about one and a half miles till we make a right turn. And there's a right turn lane and a right turn acceleration ramp on the destination road. And some construction cones up ahead. One thing about Florida, there is always road construction to account for the additional traffic of all the people moving here. So at some point we'll need to get over to the right lane to make this right turn, we're one mile away. taking advantage of this little gap. Had to slow down a little bit to get into the gap. been doing some repaving work I see and we're on the acceleration lane so we're going to need to get over which it's doing I'm so busy looking at the road I missed that it was asking me to touch the wheel so it gave me the beep beep signal So in about a mile we have a traffic light and we'll be making a left turn to get over to where the airplane hangars are. 
at the airport. There's a card access gate entry. I'll probably have to deactivate there so I can get close enough to the card reader. So there's a blinking left arrow on the light. So it's a little, we're a little blinded to oncoming traffic thanks to these cars making a left turn. And indeed, you can see on the autopilot display, it's not showing any cars there. So we're creeping a little more. We'll try to see around that car. It's still a little hazardous to try to pull out, but that's what I call a boat. So now we can see the camera cam, but he better get going. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of tight because he had to wait for the boat to get out of the way and then there was another car speeding up in the lane, which our car could obviously see because it had to do a quick lane change or a quick turn. So that's it for today's test drive. That was somewhat of a scary left turn with oncoming traffic. Had to shoot the gap and accelerate to get through the intersection without getting tagged by the guy in the left lane. Also the glitch after the software update where couldn't get the car into gear, but a reboot fixed that. That's the first time I've seen it. In any case, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, see you later. Next video will be the flight to Lakeland. Check it out.